and welcome to St Mary's Church, Piddle Hinton, where we prepare for our communion for the fourth Sunday of Advent. Very pleased to see you joining us online, either now live with the service or perhaps later on in the day. I hope you enjoy the service. to those who are watching online and thank you to those who will be watching this service later. The government published regulations, they changed again yesterday, but some of the cities in this country are going to tier four and other counties and so on. Um, there's a lot of information on Facebook, social media and information in people's hearts and the information is this, Christmas has been cancelled. No, that's not. Christmas is not cancelled. It's not cancelled in this church. It's not cancelled in the church of God. It's not cancelled in our village. Christmas is not cancelled. We are not cancelled. We are open. So welcome to you. Thank you for being here. Um, there are services arranged throughout the benefits. Julie and I do everything that we can to make sure that our services are safe. So there are carriage services which are planned outside. Please do come along. They are safe. Um, also, there is a midnight mass here, and we also have um, Christmas Day services throughout the benefits as well. Christmas isn't cancelled. It's not cancelled. We are open. We are open, and we are safe. So welcome. Welcome to you. Today, we hear the wonderful message of the Annunciation of uh, Mary being spoken to by the angels. Um, it's a, a miraculous event which occurs in which God sets up this temple, a new temple within the hearts and minds of man. And we're drawn into that narrative. It's a wonderful message today as we proceed towards Christmas. The Annunciation. The angels have spoken. God has spoken to the world. Man and God have been united through the person of Christ. A wonderful message and a message of hope which our world desperately needs to hear. God is not far off. God is with us in flesh, in the person of Jesus Christ. Great news. So before we start. 
start our service, um, the wonderful Mrs. G. Butcher is going to light our candle. And Mary's done an excellent job of making sure it's all spray or COVID safe. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> so let's remember our candles. The first candle we lit on the first Sunday of Advent was hope. The second candle was peace. And on the third candle was joy. And our third, fourth candle today is love. Augustine said Christians can be hopeful, peaceful, loving, and they can be joyful because Christ is at the centre of our lives. The white candle represents Christ. Christ is at the centre of our lives. We can be hopeful, peaceful, loving, and joyful. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for your gift of love, shown to us perfectly in Jesus Christ. Help us to prepare our hearts to receive him. Bless our worship. Help us to hear and do your word. We ask it in the name of the one born in Bethlehem. Amen. And so we stand to sing our first carol, and the wonderful carol, carol number 26. O come, O come, Emmanuel 26.
Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Our Lord is alive. Let's breathe him in and then breathe out the world. Breathe out the world and breathe him in. Together we say, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom their secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other command greater than these. On these two commands hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sin, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So together, let us confess our sin, in penitence and in faith, firmly resolved to keep to God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Would you please accept God's forgiveness? Almighty God, who forgives all, who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sin, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Because it's Christmas, there is no glory, but we go into our college, so let's ask for it. <coughs> Let us pray. God, our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, grant that as she looked for his coming as our Saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we're seated for our first reading. Thank you. <coughs> the reading is taken from the second book of Samuel. Chapter 7, beginning at the first verse. The Lord's covenant with David. Now when the king lived in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in the house of Cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord, would you, would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Israel to, from, of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? 
Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place, and be disturbed no more. The violent men shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed ju judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares that you, to you that the Lord will make you a house. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Like Camus, Beckett, and Sartre, 
And they wrote this, life is just a blank page. The characters on the page have no ultimate meaning. It's just what they invent for themselves. What is a hobbit and what does it do? Well, a hobbit and what does it do? A hobbit is a small human-like, a small human-like creature that is different from the world. It is different from other humans. It is a small human-like creature that is busy working underground. Tolkien wanted to show in his stories the providence of God's hand at work in human affairs. And it's the same point here that goes on with our first meeting from David. King David is suffering with a bad conscience. David was a shepherd and now he's been anointed by God and made into a king. He's been made into a very good king. Whilst the ark of God, the throne of God is placed in a tent. And David is wrestling with this because he wants to make a better place for God. He wants to build an imposing place where God can reside. But God has other ideas. God's response is to say, whilst you have a great idea, a place for me to reside, I've been building a house for you. But I've also been building a house for me. Not a house that you would want me to live in, but a house that I want to live in. This house is being built in human lives. Therefore, those who believe in me, those who learn to love as I love them, they are my temples, and they will never, ever fall into ruins. The same point God makes to David. God says, I build a house for me in human lives. Poor old David, he didn't really get to see God's fulfilment, God's plan. But God did build that house. He built that house in the son of David. And so this message becomes the backdrop for our gospel. There is a son of David in the womb of the virgin, a new temple. God's throne has been pitched and he's pitched that tent into human lives. And therefore the throne of God stands before you. God builds a new house, a new temple, somewhere where God can reside in human lives. And it's built in the lineage of David. It goes all the way back to Adam. That's the backdrop for today. Modern man says, nice, nice story, lovely story, but what's that got to do with me? What's it got to do with me? Again, what is a hobbit and what does it do? Tolkien's contemporaries said life is a blank sheet of paper. What we write on it, the characters, us, what we create is up to us. It's our stories. They also went on to say there is no morality, there's no good and there's no evil. Everything is just relative because it's a blank sheet of paper. It's whatever we create it to be. But like I just said, God builds a suitable house for himself in human lives. And so what of good and what of evil? Well, I'm going to leave it hanging on this fine point here. People like Francis Schaeffer, C.S. Lewis, Tolkien, many other intellectuals have been brought to the belief in God through this point here. What of good and what of evil? There are many ways to fall over in life, but there is only one right and proper way to stand back up. It takes thinking about it, doesn't it? There are many 
many ways in life to fall over. But there is only one right and proper way to stand up. God builds a suitable house for himself in human lives. God's providence is written on the hearts and minds of man because he is active in this world, making a place for himself in which he can reside in human lives. There are many great ways to fall over, but there is only one right and proper way to stand up. The letter of Roman, the letter of Romans makes this point. It finishes with this. Believing Christians, that's you and me, that's people come to church. We are construction workers in the last phase of building God's temple. You see, we're not supposed to be locked away as humans. We're not supposed to be shut out from worshipping and from worshipping with each other. We're not supposed to be closed off from God's plan. Neither are we hidden from this world, but we're active. We're active together. We're active together working bringing about the finalisation plan of God's temple in this world. We are people who recognise and work and busy in our churches, providing this place to be a place where people encounter and they sense and understand God's hand working in their lives. God promised to King David and to the Virgin Mary and he makes that promise to you and me as well, to build a single temple fit for God to dwell in for himself. God has always been building in human lives. Are we part of it? Do you recognise God setting up his temple within you? Stay together with Christians of the past, Christians of now, and of the future. We share in one common creed. Let us stand and declare our faith in God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not to me, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and in the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. 
So let us pray to our Heavenly Father, who is always listening and ready to hear our prayers. Let us pray. Gathered here in church or at home online, let us pray together for the coming kingdom. Lord of heaven, may your church be quiet enough to hear your voice, humble enough to move your way, and excited enough to spread the good news. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of heaven, bless all who lead with integrity and respect for others. Guide all in the positions of authority with humility and a sense of right. May unjust practices be changed and conflicts of great tension be peacefully resolved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of heaven, make our homes places of love and developing faith. Teach us in all our friendships to grow in generosity of spirit, to look out for one another, so that if we can help with a need, we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. Lord of heaven, give patience and courage to all who have to wait when the waiting is long and painful. We pray today for all who are suffering from poor health from those who are in hospital, for those who are recovering from treatment or surgery. We pray for our friends and neighbours who are listed on our pew sheets. We pray for those known to us personally. We pray for those known only to you, Lord. We pray too for our friends and family who we had hoped to see this Christmas. We pray for those who have found the changes in, in regulations a difficult pill to swallow. But we take responsibility for our own actions so that we put the needs of one another before the needs of ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of heaven, welcome into your eternity those who have died to this life and whose hope now is resting with you. Comfort those who grieve, reach into their pain and surround them with your love and grace. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear yeah. our prayer. <clears throat> Lord of heaven, we thank you for your faithful promise to us. Fulfilled in the coming of Jesus, we welcome his kingship into our lives each and every day. Merciful Father, accept Merciful these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Mary said yes to the hand of the Lord, as the hand of the Lord worked in her. Let us say yes and pull down the peace with God. Would you please stand as we share in God's peace? Jesus Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in his one body upon the cross. We 
meet in his name and we share in his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So let us offer one another, albeit symbolically, a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. God's peace. So you should sing our second hymn, hymn number 360, for Mary, Mother of our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God, all creation, through your goodness. We have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, all creation, through your goodness. We have this wine to set before you, fruits of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty. It is our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now... We give you thanks because you sent him to redeem us from sin and death and to make us inheritors of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may with joy behold his appearing and in confidence may stand before him. Therefore, 
with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and singing
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. I do believe it's safe for us to continue with Holy Communion. I shall come down and uh, give you the, the wafers from the Sardorian, which was consecrated on Thursday. It is COVID safe. I will answer back my hands and I will wear a face cover. Before we do that, we need to say the body of Christ and the blood of Christ. In doing so, we affirm that our sacraments are part of God's way of giving to us through the difficulties of life. They are the life rafts in the storms of life. So let's affirm them as life. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. So together, let us pray. Heavenly Father, who chose the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of the promised Saviour, fill us, your servants, with your grace, that in all things we may embrace your holy will, and with her rejoice in your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Together we pray the prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him you offer our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you to our congregation for being with us here today. As we go out into the world, please do consider that full train. 
You're not a blank piece of paper. But the providence of God works through human lives. And therefore you're not a blank piece of paper. Neither are, are a blank piece of paper those who think that we are just created good, evil, whatever, indifferent. Mary would say something like this. There is many ways to fall off your donkey, but there's only one right and proper way to sit back on it, and that's to glorify God. It's in there. It's in there. It takes thinking of that, doesn't it? But you're not blank pieces of paper. God's providence, God's hand, has been shown through the lives of humans, and including yours. We need to listen to it. As you go out into the world, would you please accept God's blessing. Would you please stand if you can. The peace of God which passeth all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of God and of the love of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in God's peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of